Welcome to my talk on feature trace recording that is joint work with Alexander Schultheis, Thomas Thüm, Timo Kehrer, Jeffrey Young and Lukas Linsbauer. Consider you run a company and you have a new employee who is highly motivated and wants to get started. So you give him a new task and he starts digging into the code base. But it takes forever for him to solve his issue. And soon both of you realize he spent most of his time, time searching for the code he's about to change but couldn't find it. This is known as the feature traceability problem, where feature traceability is the knowledge where each feature is implemented in the code base. And this problem is mostly solved in software product lines. First, developers specify the features they are about to implement, and second, they establish feature traceability between those features and the source code. So in this case, code that is red belongs to feature parallel, code that is blue belongs to feature stack, and code that is green belongs to log. But software product lines require usually education and tools and are a long-term investment with high initial costs, so developers have to be aware of the variability they are about to implement and plan accordingly, especially the software architecture. However, in practice, such requirements might not be available and instead developers usually just start coding and then they realize they have, when they have a need for a new variant of their software, they copy the whole system and alter the copy, and this is known as clone and own. Here we see that there are almost no feature traces present, if at all, as these are not documented, and if so, has, this has to be done manually. So our main question is how can we help developers to document and maintain feature traces here within this spectrum between software product lines and clone and own development? Usually there are two ways to document feature traces. The first one is to document them retroactively, which means after development in a separate working step. This is however not always possible because this knowledge might be lost when some time has passed and when adopting feature traceability to a new project, uh, to an existing project, there might be no feature traces at all and everything has to be documented at once. The other way is the proactive approach where developers already document feature traces during their development, but this has to be done manually every time, and this is our contribution with feature trace recording where we want to automate this approach. So consider Alice. She is developing the pop method of a class stack, and she realizes there's a bug. The pop method crashes when the stack is empty. To fix that bug, she first inserts a condition that checks whether the stack is empty. And for the code to be as fast as possible, she wants this check to only be present in debug mode. So she can specify the debug as the feature context of her edit. And the feature context describes the feature she's currently editing. From the feature context, we can derive the feature of the edited source code. In this case, we know that the inserted line should belong to feature debug. To finalize the bug fix, Alice has to move the existing line of source code into the condition. But this time, she doesn't know the feature of the moved line. And as indicated by the black color, there's also no information on existing uh, on feature traces yet, as previous developers also did not specify it. For this reason, Alice can also leave a feature context empty, which we denote with null. So she's not forced to set it and can proceed anyway. The next week, Alice gets a new task. Stacks should become immutable. So, when working on this issue, Alice knows that she's working on the feature functional and can set the feature context accordingly. She could do so, for example, on commit to version control or in an integrated development environment. So first, she moves a line that, that changes the stack state, which should not be allowed anymore. Second, she inserts new code that first creates a copy of the stack, alters that copy and returns it. And finally, she also has to adapt the return type. Notably, we could derive feature traces for almost the entire method by now from just the single feature context. Later, another developer, Bob, might be interested in the changes by Alice. But he has another variant where he implements the feature debug, but not the feature functional. So merging Alice's changes directly wouldn't work or would result in unwanted behavior. But fortunately, Alice recorded all feature traces that are necessary, necessary to perform such a merge. So consider both start with the same version of a pop method, the one that was buggy, and Alice just performed five edits to it, first to fix the bug, and then to implement the feature functional. We can directly see that the last three edits to feature functional aren't interesting for Bob, because these were made to a feature that's not part of his variant. So we can merge the first two edits and see that the pop method is also fixed in his variant now. So we are done, right? 
Not, not really. We can derive more knowledge. We see that Alice deleted this line of source code from her variant. Does that mean it should be deleted from all variants and the entire code base? Not really. Alice said it should be deleted from the feature functional, but that doesn't mean it should be deleted everywhere. But in particular, it means that it should be deleted only in the feature functional, but it might still be valid in variants not implementing it. We can make this knowledge ex explicit by assigning the formula not functional to storage as to this line, such that it's present in exactly those variants that do not implement feature functional, highlighted in purple now here. And the same applies to the, to the update added, the last one, where the return type was changed, but this update should only be performed in, in variants implementing the feature functional, but not in those not implementing functional, such as Bob's clone. In general, we look at the structure of source code to maintain syntactic correctness of feature traces. And when developers edit source code, we get a new version of the structure. For feature trace recording, we take the old version of the source code, the edit itself, and optionally the feature context as input. Depending on the edit being an insertion, deletion, move, or update, we derive feature traces for the new version of the source code. So in order to evaluate feature trace recording, we need a sequence of edits, for example, taken from a commit history from Git or Subversion, and we also need ground truth information on feature traces that we can compare our results with. We also need feature context, as these are the input to our method. However, these are not available, as we propose to use them in this work. As, uh, as an alternative, we use software product lines that allow to us to reverse engineer which feature context would have been necessary to accomplish, accomplish certain changes. Therefore, we use existing work by Stanzulescu et al, who provide a classification of edits to software product lines. Notably, for each type of edit, feature traces aren't highlighted with colors, but are given as preprocessor annotations, as usually in software product lines. This also allows us to distinguish edits to source code from edits to feature traces. In this example, source code is inserted together with a feature mapping M that it's annotated with. We then decompose this edit to an edit on variants, such as for Bob and Alice, and see if this edit can be reproduced in a clone and own environment when using feature trace recording. For this kind of edit, we see that it can be reproduced by inserting the code to a variant implementing the feature M under the feature context M, such that the corresponding feature will be derived by feature trace recording and merging afterwards. First, we were interested if feature trace recording indeed supports all types of considered edits from the classification, and we found yes, it does. Second and third, we were interested in the benefits of feature trace recording and if it would be really easier to specify a feature context rather than assigning features to source code manually. So first, we wanted to know how many feature contexts are necessary to accomplish a, accomplish a certain change, and we found that less or as many feature contexts are required as when directly specifying mappings manually. So we have a reduction here. And third, we wanted to know if the formulas required for feature context are more complex um, or less complex than the mappings we want to derive, and we found they are about equal to summarize, we saw that feature traceability is still a big problem, but with feature trace recording, we unlock software evolution as a new source of information for feature location tasks. In particular, we also saw that we can derive multiple feature mappings from just a single feature context, and that sometimes even incomplete knowledge on feature traces is already enough when recorded correctly to synchronize variants in a multivariant software system. And last but not least, we also saw that we support common edits to variability and can sometimes make the specification of feature traces easier. Thank you very much for your attention.